we are going to be talking about Cradle Book 10 Reaper by Will White. Um, I should just say this from the beginning, but uh, we will definitely be going into spoilers in this video. So if you haven't read the book yet and you don't want anything spoiled, stop watching, go read the book. I mean, if you've already made 10 books into the series at this point, I hope that you have the commitment to just finish out the last couple books of the series. Um, and you don't need a review to tell you that you should go read this book. But um, let's get started on it. Uh, so I think that um, I've said this over the last couple reviews of book nine and of book eight. But I really, really enjoy the fact that we are getting more of these character moments as we are getting later in the series i think that book eight book nine and book ten have all been doing a really good job of slowing down just enough to where we can get um some of those really interesting moments that we want to see without slowing down too much to drag on and um, have these very slow periods throughout the book um I think the best part of this book is for sure the ending of this book. Um, a lot of the early parts, and I'll get into that, is mostly like setting up and dealing with the consequences of book nine. And I feel like still of book eight a little bit. And so like I would say the beginning of this, I mean, there's a lot of setup that's been kind of been like the beginning of book of this book is trying to sort out and deal with and ha address these different issues that are, that have been kind of building up and building up and building up that we've been interested in. Um, but the ending, uh, Oh yeah, that was a fun time. Uh, cause we knew, you know, with us as the readers, we get to see outside of cradle in the series, which I think is, um, on a first read through, I would say is a little like, uh, what, why do I care about this? But after you've read it a couple times, it starts to make sense that like, and this is, I, I do enjoy that about um, series is when you have those elements that when you come back to reread, they make more sense. And like, you know, we care about Cradle the most, but the stuff that's going on out here is is basically you know the bigger game that's being played and it's interesting to see how those moves are kind of impacting what's going on on our surface level that we are interested in seeing um and i got maybe halfway through this book because through this book we get we get a lot of um what's going on still outside the world but we get a lot of the um information requested but they're information restricted messages and we get them as we're listening to them from the perspective of azrael and it was about halfway through the book when i was like i'm pretty sure azrael is athan and i was happily surprised that that was the case and that was definitely set up and it does clear up a lot of, I wouldn't say confusion, but it, it definitely feels very, very intentional because of like thinking about how Ethan has always been able to progress or not progress whenever he feels like it, kind of like he already knows all his revelations and stuff like that. So he can kind of choose back and forth when, uh, you know, when to, when he wants to take the next step up um there is definitely uh like the fact that he consoled monarchs when he was still an underlord like there's all these like little hints throughout the books it's like something is different here and most of it the time i think for good reason we have the uh, the image of the black marble that he's carrying around that's like oh he's probably has gotten insights beyond cradle from this but there started to come certain things in this book that I was like, wait a second. 
something's not right here. And I think the that reveal was very, very satisfying. Um, it is very interesting to to see that and see, you know, obviously for me, I'm uh, I mean, we're going to probably get still some of Ethan because he'll probably be our, our way into the Abaddon. Um, from this point forward, I mean, I'm sure we'll still get some of Serial and stuff like that, but, um, so we'll still see him, but I'm really sad that we're not going to see him interact with like Linden and Yaren and stuff like that, at least for what I am going to guess is the rest of the Cradle series. Um, because I imagine with two books left that we are going to be spending all of that time with um Lyndon Yaren and the rest of the gang as they prep and fight their way um towards ascension because i i i've said this for a while of i i, I mean i could read this series forever um but i don't think pacing wise that you can go from I mean, it can be done for sure, but I think there's so much story to be told that you need the two books for the conclusion of just inside Cradle, which would make sense because that's the series name. And then once they leave Cradle, that would be something else. Um, and I think that uh, Will has mentioned that he might be doing something. He wants to do something with them after they have ascended. And I think that will be super interesting but i i really want the next two books to really tackle this this element of how do we get the rest of the monarchs to either ascend or how do we kill them um because that's a pretty big task and there are uh a lot of them that i'm sure are not gonna like if they were gonna ascend they would have already done it so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of like really cool fights coming up. Um, and I personally have a predict prediction that I'm pretty sure Malice is going to be like the final boss of Cradle. Because um, I think Raygon Shen is going to be book 11's villain and Malice will be book 12's. Because I cannot see in any way, shape, or form that they can convince her to move on from this world. Like we definitely get a little bit of humanization of her in this book when she thinks the world's ending and she doesn't have to care about like her family, her image and stuff like that anymore. And she actually like shows compassion to mercy as like a mother. But that was only because she thought she was dying. Like she was going to die there. And I think that like, while there that that love does exist there's an element in malice that's been literally twisted and is pretty messed up um and i think that that's gonna kind of be like their final like their final challenge of like even though like we have mercy who who loves you and like we you have been there for us for a while you are standing in our way and we are gonna come to head um, which I think will be really interesting. Uh, okay. I talked a lot about positives about stuff that I think is going to come in. There's a, there's a lot of good stuff in this book and I liked a lot of scenes. I liked scenes, um, between Lyndon and his dad, um, which actually I think I'll take that right into my critiques. I, I still want more. I, I still want more of, I'm not satisfied with the amount of time that we got to spend with um his parents and his sister i i want more from that and maybe um i mean i'm sure will has a plan of what he's gonna do and maybe um you know maybe we're gonna see more of them uh, at least of kelsa in the next couple books or maybe like their story is a different story that will be told in another series and we won't get to see as much from them and Lyndon's just kind of going to be separated from them i would love to have more i really want it i can see options uh, uh, around it so 
I think uh, I'll be satisfied either way, but I have a, f- I personally have a feeling that like, especially with Athan's involvement with like Jai Long and, um, I mean, he hasn't been directly involved with Kelso, but I, I think with Jai Long, I, I'm wondering if he will become a member of the team in the next coming books. Not necessarily to fill like an Ethan role, but like to add in, like like to to widen out the ranks when they're taking on this stuff. Um, and I wonder if uh, Kelso will be included in that group. Uh, group because there's definitely um there's definitely going to be a chunk of the characters that are ascending beyond cradle after their work is finished here and i think we know that like linden yaren um zeal mercy orthos and little blue are all going to be part of that group the ones that survive because we might not get you know maybe some of them will not make it um past the events of the next couple books but those six you know i am confident if they make it to the end of the series they will not be on cradle anymore um yeah so other another critique i had of this book uh, the big uh, the i really did want more of those like side character moments which i get you know it'll slow down the pace of the book but like there was a war going on i really uh, like jai long made it to underlord like i wanted more of that and i'm wondering if we'll get more of that coming up um but it can also be kind of filled in with the imagination thinking about like oh well linden's kind of already done this i my, i i want to say this positive before i go to a critique of it i really like the labyrinth and it to me it felt like a reverse ghost water um it was a area ripe with materials that could cause them all to advance to higher levels and stages, similar to how Ghostwater was for when Linden went there. Um, but in Ghostwater, as we know, Linden got you know everything he kind of wanted as he went through. Whereas this, it was basically the reverse. They like went in, and yeah, they got a couple little trinkets and stuff like that. I mean obviously like there's bigger things that happen and there's some good stuff that they get out of it, but they don't really get as much as they were hoping. Like they don't really get a whole lot and they kind of end up losing because Raygon Chen kind of gets everything he wants or at least most of what he wants out of, out of the labyrinth. And they kind of are just behind and they just don't get access to those materials that they really wanted. Um, which I enjoyed. I think that's really cool because it, it flips it on its head of like, you know, for so long they've been basically like dealing with these tasks and overcoming these tasks. And I think it's good to see them not necessarily win. They kind of lose a lot of what they were hoping for. Um, and like, I think it'll be like that stepping stone of like, we kind of had a draw here. And we're going to go beyond that, like, right now. Uh, we are not going to let that happen a second time. So I I enjoyed that. I really liked Linden's um, Archlord Revelation. I think the changing to the Wii is such a powerful moment that it's, like, it, it's very, like, thematic to what the book is kind of about which is you know this coming together of these people who instead of practicing the sacred arts on their own and becoming so powerful on their own which is kind of how the monarchs are and even how the court the abaddon court is they are working together as like a team and one unit and i think that is really really cool um and I like how like Lyndon reflects that significantly uh, in not only in his character but within within that revelation. Um, but labyrinth uh, critique of it, there were a lot of parts, especially the battles in the labyrinth, that I was just like I could care less about this. Um, 
I think this is the first time that I've had. I'm trying to think through any other times that I've had throughout the series, but I, I really think this is one of the first times that combat to me was the least interesting part of the book. I was very invested in the character moments and stuff like that. And like, there were fights that were really cool, but with the labyrinth and this can be kind of hard because like, obviously you need to have threats and stuff like that. But I just, I, I did not care about m most of the time in the labyrinth. The only things I cared about were like Mercy getting to fight an echo of her mother and like these big character moments that we get throughout the labyrinth, which are great. But I think there's parts of it that could have been like cut down or summarized in a way that would have given us more time for these character moments, especially maybe earlier in the book where we were really deep in those like, you know, those interactions between everyone we get to go back to the black flame empire we get to see you know see all these characters that we haven't seen for a while we get to interact with them i kind of wanted some interaction between linden and um uh what's her name the emperor's sister oh god i can't remember her name off the top of my head um but i wanted some interactions with them because they were on a team in book eight and i i thought it would have been satisfying to see you know like have them talk again and have some you know dialogue between them instead it was mostly just summarized with her we didn't really get any scenes with her which i was a little disappointed by um but uh yeah i think you could have cut some time there and put it there because i i feel like with um with cradle specifically will is very conscious of his pacing and he wants the books to move very quickly which is good because I, I, for me, it's made it a big recommending point for new people getting into fantasy. I think that when you keep books short like this, it makes it, and when they're easily digestible, it's really easy to, to say, hey, look, this book's only, you know, X many pages. I don't know. I listen to almost everything that I read. Um, but it's, you know, it's like an eight, the first book's like eight or nine hour audio book. So it's super, super short and super, super good. Um, and like keeping it those short length and like, you can, obviously we get a little bit longer now, uh, to give us more character moments and stuff like that, but it's fine because the pr people have been, you know, if you're five books deep into a series, you're usually invested by that point. And I would say by book five or six, like you're definitely invested in what's going to happen next in this, um, series. Cause most of the books that I would say are the lower quality books are like book four, um, and I, I would say maybe book two. I, I think book four is my least favorite book. Um, whereas book two, I would say, has some really good elements about it, especially when my second listen through, I really enjoyed some some parts of it. But uh, I am pretty over time, so I think I'm going to stop there. Um, as always, if you had other thoughts, opinions on it, go ahead and post comments down below. Uh, I, I really enjoyed discussing with everyone, and – I, there are plenty of people who you know do not agree with my opinion totally understandable uh, this channel is made to you know for us to have critical discussions and be able to understand that sometimes we don't agree on things and part of writing is subjective and it comes from our own opinions and stuff like that so it's not always like i'm 100 percent right about everything but i'm giving you guys my opinion and i'd like to hear your guys's opinions as well and for us to like discuss and see where we differ and where we are the same it's it's interesting um we will be for this book and probably we'll discuss uh some other parts of cradle too but for this book specifically i will be doing a drink and discuss uh for this so if you have watched any of our other drinks and discuss which we've done on wheel of time and we've done on um rhythm of war from stormlight um We'll be doing a longer discussion. I'm bringing a couple friends who have read all the way up through book 10. And so look out for that. It should be out in a couple weeks. But I think that'll be it. So uh, thanks for watching.